So Sora's probably coming out tonight or tomorrow, depending on when I get this video out. And if you're looking to take the character seriously, whether it's you want to main them, you want to be one of the best Soras, maybe just dominate your region, or maybe you just are interested in learning a new character and you want to get on the Sora train. I completely understand, but I also see a lot of players get to this stage and they tend to drop the character. They're like, oh, I'm so ready, I'm so excited, and then one weekend and they're not playing them anymore. And I th find it's usually because they don't know what to do or how to improve quickly with a new character, and there will be people that will outclass you every single time, and I know how discouraging that can be. So let me give you all the information you need, let's jump right into it. First things first, if you haven't watched the Sakurai Presents, please do so. And then pick out any moves that to you look interesting. Maybe it's a good looking poke and you want to try it. Maybe you want to see just how active a move is or you want to combo with something. If it looks cool, simply write it down. Maybe see like, oh, I think this might be able to combo into this. Cool, write it down. That's good. I noticed that uh, up tilt's really cool and I, I really want to know what I can do with that button. Um, I want to know what Nair can combo into and if it has a similar property to forward tilt, depending on if we land it or if we continue the three hit combo. And I really want to know if side B can only be done once or twice, not the whole three times. So interested in that one. So I have my list of things that I know I want to do. Of course, Sakura gives us a lot of good info in that direct. So you'll have a pretty solid idea of what Sora can do. But until it gets into the player's hands and until we play the current version of Sora that the release version, we're really not going to know. So what do you do when you finally get your hands on Sora? Well, I'm about to tell you to go in the lab, but before I do that, if you have friends over, you're really excited to play the character and you just want to jump in, do it. It's not a problem to run in and feel things out. Just go in ham and <laughs> do it. Honestly, it's it's super fun to do. Um, but however, when you do eventually write stuff down and go, okay, like, these moves did this and oh, I noticed I did this against someone or this hit me here, write it all down and then get in the lab. Now, what are we going to do when we're in the lab? Well, let me show you my settings real quick. So CPU damage will mess with depending on what we want to do, right? If you start getting creative with a combo, you might want to change the damage so you can find out exactly when something works. Trajectory guide you want on. Fixed damage, we can use this to practice certain combos, but we'll save that for another day. Um, trajectory guide, of course, and I'll explain all about that later. Combo display on, invincibility display, in case Sora does have any invulnerable moves, you're gonna notice that he either turns blue or green all of a sudden. And then stale moves off, because we wanna make sure the numbers stay consistent. Um, the reason we keep the combo counter on, some of you might know the combo counter in this game lies. For instance, um, this is something Byleth can do, but it doesn't list as a combo. And that's just because the game doesn't completely understand instances like the opponent landing on the ground. There's actually a Terry combo where you go down tilt, jab one, two, Buster Wolf. The opponent can't get out of it, but the game doesn't know it's a full combo. So why use it? Because some things will combo. And if anything does just combo, we want to take note of it immediately. So. It's a very nice thing to be like, oh, that did actually combo good, or there's a multi hit or something and you want to know exactly how many hits it is. And that's good for, again, learning combos and learning the properties of the character. But once you get in training mode, I want you to press buttons, mess around, see where moves send people, you know, see if you have like special hitboxes on moves like a landing hitbox or a non landing hitbox. You know, what are the sour and sweet spots of certain moves? They're all going to impact the character differently. And we get a lot of that data right here. So if I sweet spot Terry, you'll see that he goes a certain distance. This red line means zero, this green line means 50, and the blue line means 100%. So you get an idea of how hard a move hits. We can see the base knockback and how hard it scales because the blue line is so much further away from the other ones. However, I do a move like this and you'll see uh, the scaling on down tilt isn't very large. I should be able to use this for quite a long time for combos or setups or something. But also, if you notice that a move does more or less damage in certain positions, keep note of that stuff. For instance, Sour Spot Fair is 8.6, whereas Sweet Spot Fair is 13. And so they're gonna have different knockback angles and different percentages, etc. And I want you to try out everything. If you wanna know how fast a move ends, you can use the shield button on the ground to see the first frame you can act, or in the air, you can use double jump as an indicator for when the move ends. 
For special attacks, you can do the same thing, of course, depending on if you use them in the air or ground. But yeah, use your moves in the air, use them on the ground, learn what properties you have. And the moment you see something that looks like maybe, maybe it'll combo, give it a shot, right? Like there is no harm in trying something. And if it looks tight, like it almost will work, you know what? Try it in a match. See if people air dodge out of it. See if people can get away from you. That stuff is, again, game changing. But once you play through all the moves, you got some combos down. The last two things I want you to do is check your throws and check if you have any kill throws, combo throws, or throws that put people in a nasty spot, like Sonic's down throw because throwing is something you're gonna do a lot in a normal match, and so you don't wanna be lost when you finally get a throw and not really sure what your character does from a throw, but then also practice your out of shield punishes. What are your out of shield moves? What's good for out of shield pressure? See how fast they are, see how they feel, and then try to use them against your opponent. But that's the next step, fighting opponents. Fight people online, fight people offline, get some sparring partners over, Go to your local and play Sora. Get bodied, play the mirror match, get bodied, you know, mess other people up so they can get bodied. It's a learning experience. Save your replays because later we're gonna be cross comparing those. But playing matches is everything here. And also make sure to give yourself some time. The learning process can take days. Remember that your brain's gonna create neural pathways to kind of remember all the stuff about the character. And then as you work those neural pathways, they become more natural and more fluid. So you'll just be able to do the combo instead of thinking about the combo. And so it might take a, a night or two of practicing a combo, going to bed, waking up and giving it another shot that day for you to really get something nailed down. So you fight people, you get better. What do you do next? The next step is check the videos. There's going to be a lot of pro players playing, good players checking out Sora. You're going to have day one tournaments. You're going to have tournaments on the weekend, Twitter clips and combos. And look at it all. Some of it might not be real. Some of it might not be good. It's okay. The first week is a scramble. Some people might definitely get a hold on what the character does, but it just won't be very developed at first. But then when we start hitting that second weekend of tournaments, you're going to start seeing real Sora players coming out of the woodworks, showing us what they can do with the character and a bit more of like the flow to expect from most Sora players. And then as we start hitting one month in, you'll start seeing that stuff completely solidified. Players really know what they're doing and we're starting to figure out the nuances of different matchups and whatnot and figure out where Sora feels in comparison to other characters in the game. And then two months and three months, you should have great players playing Sora. If Sora's strong, you'll see him in tournament. Like around that time, you'll have a ton of information. Now, after the first week, feel free to cut back on how much you have to watch about the character. I would do an update after every weekend because tournament VODs will be up. Try to find some Sora players, but maybe get in the Sora Discord. Maybe go talk, to, make friends with other Sora players on Twitter or, you know, in your local scene and start sharing tech with each other so that you can all level up together. And here's something that I get too many times whenever I'm teaching. Players like to learn stuff on their own. They don't want to feel like they're copying from other people or that they're like stealing from someone else. But the answer is, please steal. You see someone have a cool combo and you want to land that cool combo, steal it. It's your combo now. Go do it. Go practice the thing you saw. I don't want you putting in so much extra time trying to figure everything out for yourself. I want you to put in some time to figure it out for yourself because that's when you find your own personal tech, maybe things you prefer or don't prefer. And to this day, there are great Incineroar players out there, but I still do some things my way because I just think it works better for how I play and the kind of strategies that I go for. And that's what makes fighting games kind of brilliant and especially Smash. So doing it by yourself is good but having other people to steal the homework of is perfectly fine. And I want to give you my blessing, my permission. Steal their tech. It's okay. Um, always credit people, of course, if they found something cool. But, you know, it's okay. We're all learning this together. And then I'm going to, of course, post my reaction to Sora, how I feel about the way he plays, the patch notes, all that sort of stuff. I'll be doing like sort of a live talk about that or maybe a post stream discussion video for you all. And if you want more Sora content or maybe that full length video on how to learn characters, let me know. I would love to help you guys out with that sort of thing. 
But I hope you all have fun with Sora. I know I'm going to. And yeah, check me out on Twitch if you want to watch me do any of this stuff live. And get subscribed to the channel if you want to see some more of these videos. But that's going to do it for me. Thank you all so much for watching. And I'll see you in the next one. Get bodied, get bodied, going to bed, waking up so they can get bodied, get bodied. You see someone have a cool combo and you want to land that cool combo, steal it. It's your combo now. Go do it.